Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Can Mayonnaise Kill a Jedi Podcast. I am your host, or in this case, the co-host, Artificial Dragon. And I am your host, Hannah. And as you could tell by that little introduction, um, this is past April 1st at the time... Oh, okay. When this episode is, re- is recording, it's past April 1st, so late April Fool's, I suppose. Oh, but... yeah. April, Fool- <laughs> April Fool's is tomorrow. We're recording yeah, this April on the Fools. 30th. Yeah, it's like literally two days away, but... Yeah, um, kind of a little late April Fool's thing. Um, we're going to do a little role reversal. But before we get into this episode, let me go on to the Patreons. So for this month, uh, we got a lovely new Patreon art piece. And this time we have one of my most favorite bounty hunter characters, Cad Bane, showing off his biceps. Nice. Yeah. For any of you simps that love uh, shirtless cowboys, but you love them in a in the blue skin variety, then Cad Bane is right up your alley. I know he's up my alley <laughs> in more ways than one. He's definitely got the fastest hands of a West, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, with that aside, um, so if you enjoy uh, the content that we make, um, be sure to support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash can mail. Once again, that's patreon.com slash can mail. Any uh, tier that you support from the smallest being $3 and the highest being $10. The highest tier, you'll get all those Patreon art pieces. And any other tier, you'll just uh, have instant access to our Discord server. Um, it's still small, as I mentioned before, but we're still a growing community and... We just love chatting with you guys, talking about Star Wars lore, um, getting suggestions on future episodes, and just having general memes being posted here and there. Oh yeah, the memes are the best. Yeah, I there's like this uh, new uh, user that just recently contributed, and he's been posting a lot of uh, Padme memes here and there. I did see that. That's pretty yeah, cool. that's pretty funny. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Hannah. Why don't you let our audience know what uh, is going on in this episode? All right, ladies and germs, we are <laughs> going to be talking about Voss. The Voss. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, episode idea I had for a little while. Um, Hannah wanted a specific episode and she was talking about the Voss and I decided, you know what? You're a, more of an expert on the Voss, seeing that you are the Switor expert in this regard I somewhat well. don't somewhat. don't call me an expert well compared to me you like what your current play time is like what 200 hours or something like that over 400 For, over 400 <laughs> if only if it was over 9,000 huh. <laughs> but yeah um i've I, as of now i have completed all of the force classes neat i still gotta work on the tech classes yeah you're currently on the smuggler storyline if i do recall right yep working on the smuggler it's That's pretty cool. fun too yeah, it's, uh, I always remember, like, hey, I'm doing the, uh, the, uh, Imperial Agent, and I'm doing the Rebel Trooper. You should try these guys out. And you're like, eh, maybe, maybe, I'm, I don't know. I wanted to complete the Force, uh, group first, but... Yeah. Eh, it's still kind of tough to get the buttons down and everything, but it is fun. It is pretty fun. Especially and with the smuggler, because playing a female smuggler, you are a whore! <laughs> I'm looking forward to when I eventually get around to playing Smuggler. But yeah. Um, So yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh, take the reins, Hannah, since you are now the host. All right. So. Oh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, lost my train of thought. Um, So as we said, we're talking about about Voss, the planets, and the Voss, the species. Yeah, those... This uh, is a bit of uh, the two wrapped into one. Yeah, because as is tradition with all things in Star Wars, they have a race and a planet that have the same name for whatever reason. Yep. All right. The planet Voss lied in the allied Tyon sector of the Outer Rim. All right. Its system, along with the people, share a name, as we've said. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has one moon, a rotational period of 28 hours, oh, okay. and an orbital period of 355 local dates. 300. So that's a little bit less than the rotation cycles on Earth? 10 days left. Okay. Or 10 days shorter. 10 days shorter. And it's got 27 hours, you said? Yep. 27 or 28 huh. hours. Okay. Okay. So it's just four hours longer a day there than it is here on Earth. 
Okay, I did not know that, so I'm learning new things. I sent a picture of what the planet looks like from space in the chat. Yep, a very blue-looking planet indeed. It kind of reminds me of a, a little bit of Corellia a little bit. Yeah, it's basically another Earth. Yep, pretty much. This planet has a breathable atmosphere, mm -hmm. a temperate climate, including mountains, forests, deserts, and plateaus. Very nice. Very Earth-like, yeah. And I will send a picture that I got there. You got it? <gasps> I mean, it's pretty breathtaking when you <laughs> see it the first time. Oh, yeah. Um, it's kind of like Alderaan, but more, or but less uh, worry. It kind of reminds me a little bit about uh, the mountainous regions outside of Flagstaff, you know, where Snowball is, during, especially during the fall. It's oh, really yeah. It's really beautiful out there. Oh, yeah. The points of interest of Voss are the Gormak Lands where the Gormak live, yeah. the Nightmare Lands, the Old Paths, and the Pella Three Marches. Love you guys. The Nightmare Lands are where all the evil shit are. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty obvious. Oh, don't go to the Nightmare Lands. Why? What's over there? You don't want to know. <laughs> the uh, capitals of both cities are Gormakos and Voska. Voska. I assume that's the capital of Vaz and Vagorm are is the capital of Vagormak. Gormakas is the capital of the Vormak. Voska is the capital of the Vos. Okay, I'm not going to dive into their originality, but moving on. <laughs> <sighs> the only example of flora that was provided was the Tune fruit. The Tune fruit. Okay. I don't think there was any other information. On that, <laughs> well, obviously, um. Vaz has a lot of trees there, so I mean, that they can't look be a lot the only flora out there. I mean, that was the only, like, plant-giving, or fruit-giving flora. Well, I mean, okay, okay, that's fair, but obviously it has uh, trees and everything. Just going off what I found in the article. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> it's okay. Keep going. All right. There were all types of, it, uh, all types of animals to be found, including Uxibis, Wingmaws, Mavors, Veranticus, and Nexus. Oh, the good, old, the good old bad kitties are down there, too. Yep, I will send pictures in a minute. Okay. Ooks beasts are large, shaggy herbivores who are very easily agitated and aggressive. Oh, guys. Pack animals most comfortable in large herds. The horned animal was no easy prey to the pouncing mink, cat, or flying wing moths. The spines along its back could easily puncture the skin of the predators, Domesticating looks beast was no easy challenge. Mm -hmm. The animal might imprint on a single being, forming a strong bond and loyalty with the individual. Like a bantha. Yeah, like a bantha. That's hey, cool. A larger, more spiky-backed bantha, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they look so fluffy when you see them in the game. It's like, I want to pet it. I assume they're like one of those NPCs. And, okay, I say NPCs. The uh, animal characters. Animal characters that are just friendly right off the bat and everything. Somewhat, yeah. Okay. There's a picture... In the chat. Oh, yeah, it does. It, yeah, it kind of looks like a uh, cross between a nerf and a uh, banfa. But nerfs are the uh, the uh, cat things from Eldran. Yep. All right, next are the Shaw Claws. The Shaw Claws. These were massive armor insects native to Voss that possessed powerful foreclaws. They were considered a delicacy by the Gormak, but would secrete deadly toxins after they died. As a result, they had to be specially cooked alive. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it. It... It kind of reminds me of a uh, of the Japanese when they cook puffer fish. Yeah, and they look like giant crabs. So. Oh yeah, they do look like crabs. So yeah, that's the shark claw, the mavor, M A W V O R R, also known as Chris fangs or Christ fangs, were a hostile, non sentient species native to the planet Voss. The four-legged multicolored creatures were primarily found in the Old Paths and the Nightmare Lands, where they were especially abundant in the Flamewood and Chris Van Glade areas, respectively. A dark-skinned variety of a Malvor, known as Bog Malvors, were common in the endless swamp of Zakul. Okay. The Voss viewed local Malvar as their guardians and protector, or protectors due to their tendencies to attack the Gormak on site and took steps to maintain the Malvar population around Voss Ka. Okay. I don't think I grabbed a picture of that one, though. Oh, uh, it's fine. But yeah, they're just one of the more common animal NPCs that you see. Okay. I, okay. 
Yeah. Okay. So far, the wildlife is pretty standard as far as uh, Star Wars plants are concerned. Like, oh, wait until we get to this next one. Oh, boy. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Those of you who know the meme. Oh, boy. Oh, no. This is a Varanticus. A Varanticus? Man. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to... Uh... Oh. This was... This was only native to Voss. It is a large, bipedal, non-sentient species. The only information on them is that the Gormrak experimented on these to create monstrous cybernetic war beasts. Oh, it looks like a weird cross between a gorilla and a uh, frog. Like those poisonous dart frogs? Somewhat, but <laughs> they can fuck you up. I can imagine, yeah. Uh, the meme about this one, outside of, you know, going more into the fandom part, um, mm -hmm. this was sold as a mount in the Galactic Marketplace for, or no, not the Galactic, the Cartel Market. Yeah, the Cartel Market. For, like, a week straight. And people started to worship the Savannah Varanticus. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Because I guess the Cartel Market changes daily. I'm not sure. I can imagine because uh, remember when you were telling me about finding that uh, slave outfit or whatever it was? Yeah, the dancer could, outfit. Yeah. For a little while, I could not find it. And then it just appeared on the market randomly. I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And that's that's generally the meme. It's just uh, it was there for a limited period of time. And people that grabbed it are worshipped. I guess so. <laughs> but it's like the mount itself is worshipped. It's like, Savannah Varenticus, my lord and savior. No, no, I'm just picturing, like, you know those uh, oh, those TF2 servers where they they just have a conga line and they go across the entire map? Oh, yes. I just imagine that, but with this mount at the front, like, unga, unga. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the fandom loves the Varenticus. Uh, apparently, and this is the first time I've ever heard of it, so <laughs> I'm learning something new every day. All right, moving on to the natives. No rad. The Gormak and the Voss. Gormak look a bit like lizards, but they don't have noses like you or I. Yep. And there is a noticeable difference between males and females. Males or females are shorter, and they don't have like this. It's called a whorl, W-H-O-R-L, but it's like okay. a ridge. And uh, I will send you those pictures. Okay. Where are they? Okay, female and male. Oh, okay. So the female just has a uh, more flat face. Yeah. Like less bony plates and everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, okay. The Gormak are a very aggressive species who love warfare and competition while hating the Voss. Seeing them is an unnatural plague. Even though they are considered primitive, they had excellent minds for technology but stayed confined to their home world. Yeah. Was, weren't they one of the races that were made by the uh, Mother Machine or something? No. Okay, it's probably another race I'm thinking of then. Zabrak? Zabrag, the Tweeleg, and there was another race that they were imprisoning on that planet or something. Tegruda, I believe. Tegruda. Yeah. Can't Whatever. remember. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There, there's just two races in Swator that I get mixed up for some odd reason, but that's good to know. So, classical tribal warrior race. Like the Kalish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they were also technical, technologically advanced for their uh, society, I, I suppose. They had not left their home world until mm. Sith Inquisitor story, uh, which yeah. I will get to. Okay. Not gonna rush ya. <laughs> the Voss, on the other hand, have a very prominent sexual dimorphism. Males have blue skin and orange eyes, while females have red skin and azure eyes, like a very, very bright blue. Yeah, that was the uh, individual I used as a, uh, as a uh, reference for the thumbnail art. Oh, nice. Yeah, you remember the... Uh, the I wouldn't say pink color, but yeah, you pointed out that's the female one. Yeah, the red. Yeah, the rest. The red. Bleh. I'll send a male and a female. Yeah, very interesting 
<laughs> phenotypes. It's like, hey, what's the what's the difference? Well, one's red, one's blue. Yeah. <laughs> Both share distinct markings on their bodies, and their voices have a mechanical tinge, making them sound a little bit like droids. And they also do not have distinct pupils. I compare it to, like, a honeycomb shape, but if you look closely at their eyes, they have this, like, circular pattern in the back. Hmm. It just, it's a unique kind of thing. So they're almost insectoid slash biomechanical looking? But still humanoid. Yeah. Huh. That's weird. Yeah, it is a bit weird. The Voss do not mature sexually until they are married and participate in the rite of Ardor, in which the ceremony awakens said desires. The Voss also spoke very little aside from funeral rites and times of hardship where they outwardly showed emotions. You can see that in multiple times, especially in the beginning of the war with uh, the Eternal Empire. Because okay. Sauna Ray talks a lot. I can imagine, yeah. Well, that's kind of interesting. Like, they, you said that they stay, uh, they don't mature until they get married or something like that? Yeah. That, what, what happens when a Voss stays a virgin? Do they just stay childlike or something? I don't think so. <laughs> that's just something of, I wouldn't say it's silly, but still funny to think about. I am like two paragraphs away from the ends of my notes. Okay. Um, anyway, continue on with the history of, uh, of the Voss race and everything. The Voss were also very highly force sensitive with the three, the council of mystics receiving visions and interp- which were then interpreted and followed. And they were basically a very totalitarian government because they ran everything. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. And they see themselves as the uh, superior race compared to the Gormrix and everything. Yeah, compared to the Gormak, the Voss see them as superior. Yeah. Which happens with a lot of races in Star Wars, don't you think? Yeah, it seems like it. Like, uh, what was it? The Sith dominate a lot of races across the galaxy. The humans consider themselves superior to all races in the galaxy. Uh, the Corellians, who are still humans, are kind of see themselves as superior to all their other neighbors in the Corellia system. In the uh, Chiss, too. In the Chiss, exactly. Um, I wouldn't say the Nemodians, but the Duros kind of see the Nemodians as greedy deviants of their species and everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you see uh, this pattern a lot in Star Wars, it seems. Yeah, very true. All right, moving on to the Indonable Gormak. All right. I only have three examples, but, you know... I haven't played the other storyline, so. Mm-hmm. The only known Gormak, Gormak who, was na- who was able to finally leave Voss, who was named Hadric, okay. who was the only Force-sensitive of his kind. He aided Lord Kallig in cleansing the ghosts from their mind and received freedom in return. Oh, yeah, he's a significant part of the, uh, I assume, the Civ Inquisitor storyline. Yep, right? okay. when your mind's about to get nom nom by the ghosts. Nom nom. <laughs> Oh yeah, those are the, uh, the four spirits that the Inquisitor gets in their storyline, right? Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Other notable Gormak include Rokas, who joined the Alliance in the fight against the Star Fortresses. Very cool. And a king named Jokul. Jokul, okay. They're, he's, I think you fight him on both sides of the Consular and Knight uh, stories. Okay. Because the stories on Voss are surprisingly unique to every class yeah i think that's pretty cool it is very cool i the vaz aren't exactly a race that i got too much into but they're like one of those unique force uh neutral organizations where they don't lean to either light or the dark side and yeah they mentioned that several times in the jedi uh in the jedi uh stories yeah it's like it's like oh we can't work with the boss they they don't follow the jedi way it's no like, and I would imagine, like, the Vaz, do they have some sort of special power, like, foreseeing the future or something like that? Yep, visions. Yeah, I would imagine, because both the Sith Empire and the Republic take took interest in the Vaz for mutually exclusive things. Yep, I have several examples of those. Firstly, being Gaiden Co., a potential mystic who worked with the 
Jedi Consular. Okay. Talsico, who work with Darth Saravan in pushing for the for an alliance with the Empire. Mm-hmm. Lokir Ka, a diplomat who aided the a Republic privateer in bringing down Rogan the Butcher's plans on Voss, which included um, shipping out cybernetic monstrosities of said creatures, which had never been discovered at that point. Yeah. Yeah, classic <laughs> uh, Swift Tour storyline. Oh no, there is this dangerous weapon that could change the course of a war. We gotta stop it, and we stopped it. Okay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Talaray, a Voss commander who aided the hero of Tython in defeating Sel Makor, who is a dark side manifestation that actually was able to trap the Emperor for a while on Voss. Oh, that's that's pretty goddamn impressive. You face him in you face him in the Sith Warrior story. Okay. Because you have to free the voice of the Emperor. <laughs> you know, for an all might like, when I talked about him in his own episode, you see he can devour an entire planet twice. And yet he's still able to get trapped by several Force entities, was manipulated by Revan, that sort of thing. I mean, that happens a lot, it seems. I mean, not every villain is perfect. No, no, that is true. But he's still fucking terrifying. Terrifying, but... I mean, I saw a YouTube poll asking who would win in a fight, Tenebrae or Palpatine. Yeah, yeah, that's always a common one. And let me guess, Tenebrae won. No shit. <laughs> or wait, no, it was Palpatine. But all oh, yeah. the all the comments were saying, no, Tenebrae. The dude is the Sith Emperor. He ate two planets. Literally, did the big suck on two planets. And he managed to, one, be immortal, and two, split his consciousness into multiple fucking bodies. Multiple fucking bodies, and after he quote-unquote died, he, uh... He still <laughs> came back! He still came back as free incarnations of himself. Yes. God damn, dude. And that was he only, just cannot stay dead. But that was only implanting it into Satil's mind and yeah. her students. It's like forming himself from the memories. It's like... But still, his influence is still there. It's like, what the fuck? Palpatine, he only clear he only created a clone. Yeah. Oh man. Wait until we get around to the uh, Dark Empire comics because that is uber bullshit Palpatine right there. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Alright, then we have the three Son V, Gunta Mare, and Nen G. And I realized I forgot to send you all the pictures of these people. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that, 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 that. And last but not least, we have Sana Ray, the overseer of the, of the Force Alliance. Or... <laughs> Brain fart there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Words. God damn it. The overseer of the Alliance's Force Enclave in Odessin. Okay. I gotta say, though, the Vaz really have an interesting little design. You would assume that all those patterns on their face are like face paint or something, but from what I'm guessing, it's part of their natural biology or whatever? Probably. It's not really explained. Okay. It does make them feel a bit more mechanical, in a way, if you look at it from, like, the droided part of view. Yeah, because you said they specifically have mechanical-like voices, yet, as far as we know, they are completely organic. Yeah. So I think they're like more insectoid-like. I wouldn't say for the Voss, but definitely the Gormak. They remind me a lot of insects and lizards. Oh yeah, a, a nice little combination of a... It reminds me of a little bit of a Kalish kind of face with a mix of a verpine. That's that's Jokel in the picture. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I mean, they look pretty cool though. Yeah, they are pretty cool. Kind of a shame you can't play them as a race in the game. Though. I want to. <laughs> that would be so cool, but you can play them in Star Wars 5e. Star Wars 5e is not official, but yes, you can. It's in the handbook. <laughs> oh, man. So, is there any more you want to dive into, Hannah? Any more you want to educate me on? Unfortunately, that is all I got. Ah, it's fine. Um... The Vos are kind of a little footnote. It kind of makes sense that they don't have much of a history after Swator because it's a Swator exclusive thing. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of interesting if there was like a couple of journal entries of what happened to the Vos. Like that would be very cool. Like I, 
I assume they're still there in the canon of Star Wars. Well, okay, not the current canon of Star Wars, but you get what I mean, the Legends canon of Star Wars. Yeah, they're still there somewhere. I'm just assuming in my head canon, like, after uh, everything is said and done in Swator, the Sith Empire just nuked that planet to oblivion. I would not be surprised. <laughs> I mean, they glassed Mandalore. Yep, they, they, well, okay, it was the Imperial Empire that glassed the fuck out of Mandalore, but... Yeah, I could imagine the same would be would be with the boss too. Probably because I think at most points in the stories they're like, "Oh, this this planet is newly discovered. We haven't met these people yet, so we need to, you know, play nice, try to get them to side with us." Yeah, and then after ev- we got everything we want, we'll just nuke them into oblivion so nobody else can have them, whatever. I don't know. I think, That's such a Sith thing to do, though. I think Voss was discovered by a Sith ship that crashed there. Oh, okay. That's a neat little background detail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining the Sith are all like, oh, crap. We we got these powerful Force users. Oh, crap. The Jedi are also learning about them. We need to learn everything we can from them first. But apparently ancient Sith and ancient Jedi came and trained them, huh. which allowed the Voss... The Voss originally, because they were all one species, yeah. to split into the Voss and the Gormak. Okay. But you said that the Gormak turned into the Voss, so was it the Gormaks that were trained by the Jedi and the Sith first? I don't remember that point, <laughs> but I just remember they were one species, they split off. Okay. Okay. I mean, that happens a lot. That does happen a lot, like... It's not outside of the uh, realm of possibility. Like, the Duros, the Nemodians, they're related. Yes, they are so dramatically different, both physically and culturally. Mm-hmm. Like, the Nemodians are greedy cowards, the Duros are the opposite, that sort of thing. Yeah, and they are, and just like the Voss and the Gormak, they're very different culturally. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a uh, nice little short topic, shorter than usual, but... I'm it sorry. Was... <laughs> it's fine. It's your first time in. There's not much you could uh, work with with uh, a planet slash species that appeared in like one source of media in the Star Wars canon. There is only like half a chapter dedicated to it in a game. So that is fair. Um, but considering of what you had to work with, I think. You did a pretty good job at explaining the Voss and the Gamor. Uh, I keep on forgetting the names. Uh, the Gormans? Gormak. Gormak. Okay, Gormak. The Voss is a lot easier to understand. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> but yeah, um, let me see. If you were to expand more on the Voss as a race or the planet as a whole, what, what would you want to expand more on? I mean, I try and and focus on more like. S- Another brain fart. <laughs> I try and focus more on like the daily life, and you know, just more the things that people usually think of when you're talking about like a normal uh, race. I mean, like we're har- we hardly know anything about the culture. That is there, yeah. There was very little to offer for culture for both of them. And, yeah, just, they, it's kind of like with the Togruta, it's just there's not enough there. Yeah, that is fair. They don't have, do they mention any unique force abilities, or is it just like force visions and shit? Mainly just force visions. So they're kind of, they're, okay, I say Saifo Diaz, but I assume they don't pass out that much. No. (laughs) Oh, I'm, I'm never going to get... I'm never going to forget about that meme of Cycle Diaz passing out all the time. Oh, here's one thing I forgot. The Voss oh. Commandos. Oh, okay. They, they're they not just like a peaceful society. They have an army. They have military. Yeah, yeah you mentioned they were totalitarian, so I don't imagine they have a standing army. They have a protection force, I guess. That's okay. a good way to put it. So are they all force users, or do they just use guns and shit? No, they have blasters. They have vibro staffs. Okay. So I assume they're like kind of like a militia or a straight up army. I think an army because when in the Jedi Consular story, Gaiden Co. becomes a mystic. Okay. He has an army of a hundred commandos with him. Nice. For the Rift Alliance. So I I wish we knew more about like the structure of what it became to be a mystic and, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, okay. I didn't know exactly what I was expecting from such a minuscule topic, but I think they're pretty interesting. They they are absolutely like one of those races, aside from Aigo and the Diaphragm, that I would love to expand more. Oh, yeah. Aigo has a paragraph that's like this big. Yeah, it was just like Barely a paragraph anything. or two. <laughs> yeah, one day we will get around to talking about the Diaphragm and Aigo, but that will be like shorter than this episode currently. It's going to be filled with a lot of headcanon. <laughs> Indeed. But, uh, yeah, do you have... Uh, Anything else you want to share, Hannah? Unfortunately, that is all I got. Okay. So, everybody, I'll let you take the honor, Hannah. Well, everyone, that is our episode on the Voss. I am so sorry it was so short. <laughs> and that is our episode of Can Mayonnaise Kill a Jedi? Or, in this case, how long can we extend the episode? <laughs> Give me a break. I tried. No, no, no. It's good. It's really good, Hannah. You... With what you had to work with, it was fine. It was fine. Plus, it's easier for me to edit. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> but yeah, um, so do you? I'm sure you know what our uh, next episode is going to be about, Hannah. Uh, actually, can't remember. God damn it. Okay. Um. So another Swator related topic. We will be diving into something that's uh, much more rich than the Vaz. Uh, sorry to say that. Um, oh, right, right, right. The Dark Council. I'm going to enjoy this that, that episode. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to dive more into the uh, supreme chat of the Sith, Darth Mar. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I had fun with this episode. It was actually nice to just sit back and allow my co-host to do the research. It was really nice. Um and I didn't know too much about the boss. I knew that they were a thing. I know that they were force users, that sort of thing. Um, I did know a little bit about them and the Garmox being two separate races, but I didn't know too much about them. I purposely hold off on uh, on any Swator campaign so I could be surprised, like, whoa, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I think the... Uh, the the Vaz have so much potential because they're just, just this random group of force users like they have force visions both the sith and the republic are interested in them what happens to them afterwards that sort of thing why do they share, share the same name as quinlan boss in the modern <laughs> era of star wars that sort of thing two s's <laughs> not one <laughs> i knew i had to throw it in there though but anyway um i hope you guys enjoyed this very short episode and uh i guess uh Happy April 1st, even though this isn't exactly an April Fool's episode. Any closing statements, Hannah? Don't read me too much in the Discord. <laughs> and anyway, may the fours be with you and have a great rest of your day. This is the way. This is the way. And may the fours be with you all. Bye-bye. Adios. Adios.